We're going to join our Arise correspondent, Adefemi Akinsoya, at the site of the building collapse on Gerard Road. Adefemi? Hi, Tundun. Thank you very much for coming back to us. There's been a major update in the death toll. We're just hearing now that 36 people are now dead. Uh, all of those deaths, of course, a tragedy. That's a major jump from the numbers of 21 slash 22 that we were hearing yesterday in the early parts of this morning. So again, 36 people have been confirmed dead. Of that, of those 36 people, there are three women and 33 men among the corpses. And unfortunately, as it stands now, survivors remain at nine. Among those nine survivors, only one of them, a woman, a of them men. I've spoken to the Nema Lagos chief about the process of formally identifying both those corpses and indeed those survivors. People are still on the streets wanting to be able to put faces and identities to these numbers, to these updates in the, the death toll. And he's told us that when it comes to formally identifying the dead, that's going to have to be something that's taken uh, control of by the hospitals. Uh, the mortuary that is been collecting the bodies retrieved from this scene is that of Bagada General Hospital and Nema says that it will be the hospital who will formally make any type of identification as it pertains to the dead people that we've been hearing about. You'll also be aware that among the dozens of people believed to be trapped in the building when it first came down, it is of course believed that the property developer behind the structure, Mr Femi Oshibana, is among them. Uh, as it stands, we've not been able to formally identify where whether or not he's among the survivors or unfortunately among the people who have been uh, confirmed dead. But again, that death toll has jumped up to 36 people dead. Uh, once again, among them, those dead, three women and 33 men. And the nine survivors that we have are one of them women, eight of them men. Tundun. Well, Adefemi, I mean, uh, there's something here uh, that is a bit curious and that's likely to be disturbing uh, to those who are following this story. Um, this is a company, Foscore Homes uh, Limited. But the name, the only name that we have had is that of the uh, main, uh, the managing director of the company, uh, Femi Oshibono, who is said to also have been involved at the site. But are there no other staff, off-site staff, uh, who would ha probably have a record, uh, you know, people working on that property and who can give us information as the uh, state authorities try to put names uh, to the faces. Uh, we have only heard about uh, the families, the concerned families. Where is the company itself? One man cannot constitute a company. So, you know, any, any leads uh, in that regard? Dr. Rubin, therein lies the problem. You'll know that there was no formal manifest, no way to formally account for the people who were on site, on the premises, the day it came down. And thereafter, we've just had, and what we've continued to see, are family members who, have, who are claiming that it was their family members, people who they know who were in there. And you do ask a very valid question. It can't have been just one person when it pertains to the representation of the company itself, Four School Homes Limited. We have not been able to formally or publicly speak to any representative of that company to give us a, a, a better, a stronger, more formal analysis as to how many people are on the ground. If the Lagos State Governor yesterday was saying that there was no manifest, that in itself is a violation. And while it is too early to tell whether or not this investigation will take a criminal turn, it is looking that it may well happen that way if the, one of the first violations we're hearing is that there was no manifest and no official record, no register of the people there. We will continue to give you those updates and keep our eyes and ears open for any representatives from the, the property developers or any of the structural engineers involved in this matter. But as it stands now, all we have are the family members that you're seeing sat down there, they may not even be aware that the death toll has jumped all the way up uh, to 33 as it has now. And honestly, uh, we will continue searching for more answers and more representatives from the company itself because many, many questions need to be asked and all of these people are waiting for answers. All right, Fabi, uh, the family members have they, have they got any information at all, you know, from the information desk 
Because if you say that it is Bagala General that will still determine how they can identify the bodies recovered, and I don't know probably who is in charge of the survivors, then why are they waiting there? What's the information? Who is talking to them? Because it just looks as though they're limbo. Nobody's telling them anything. Well, this is it. There seems to be a breakdown in the chain of information. Some of the family members did, in fact, go to Bagada General yesterday. Uh, some of them who, I, I, I believe at least one of them knew for sure their loved one had unfortunately died in the collapse. and um, Their body was taken to Bagada General, but it was not released to them. And they weren't able to find any type of formal confirmation from the hospital yesterday. That same person put his concerns to the Lagos State Governor frustrated and very upset that as it stands now he's not been able to formally identify the person who he believes he has lost and what is the process. Lagos State Governor did tell them that it, they would have to wait until uh, much later. Hopefully today that would be the case where more people are able to get a bit more confirmed information as it pertains to the people lost, the people who have been taken to the their mortuaries and their identities because as you can see the people here even though they may well be aware that more people have been discovered dead a lot of them are hopeful that their loved one the person who they are searching for will be found alive and that's why they want to stay here for that information there's a certain level of attachment they have to the site because of the obvious uh, ongoing rescue operations and it is very difficult and very harrowing as well to know that there are people who may well need to go to the hospital to find out information, but when they get there, it may not be trickling down to them as fast as possible. This is the situation on the ground here. A lot of confusion mixed in with despair. Well, Adefemi, you reported earlier that a help desk had been set up at the site. Uh, where is that help desk? Because uh, a tent was showed earlier. It looked like uh, there were only policemen sitting there. What kind of help is being provided? And where is the help desk? Is it possible for you to talk to the persons? Uh, that's the help desk. Okay. Are there policemen? Who Absolutely. are the people there? Take a look at it, Dr. Ruben. You can see that there are four different uh, tents here. One for a counselling section, a medical section, and the information desk. It is the information desk, as you can see here, that does appear to be empty. But the medical section is adequately staffed. Good morning to you all. Uh, we're live on Arise News. If you can tell us when do you think the information desk will be arriving here? I understand that you guys form part of the medical section, and you're here to check the blood pressure of people are you also part of the information desk uh, we are hearing that the death toll has jumped up to 36 so for the people who want to hear a bit more to how, how, how much is it 32 to 33 uh, 32 with the people who are sat here how can they find out information on the identification process what is the plan for that yeah, what they need to do, they come to the information desk, they fill a form, tell us the name of the missing person, the address, they see the person, and you know, the relationship between them and the person. And they've been doing that even we started this morning, yes. and the information has been collated. Right, so what happens next? As you said, it seems as yeah, all of those people... Yeah, had a press briefing with them yesterday, that after this collation, there will be a post of all the bodies, and then they will call them when to come and identify their corpses. Okay, so they, as it stands out, what they need to do is wait for a phone call and then they'll be able to find out where they can identify their corpses. All right, thank you very much. I hope you were able to hear that yes. in the studio. Uh, just to correct the woman's figures just there, she said it was 32. We are told it's 36. 36 people dead. And she says that many of the family members have already filled out forms and what they need to do, unfortunately, is just wait for from the hospital to confirm whether or not it is their loved one who has been uh, taken to the, the mortuary there. You know, speaking to Nema, they did say that uh, a lot of the bodies can be physically identified, but they will still all uh, go, also go through a DNA, DNA identification purposes, and it is unclear how long that will take and whether or not that is what is needed as it pertains to the people who are waiting there but yes um contrary to what the woman said we are hearing that it is in fact 36 people dead now well thank you very much uh, Adifemi Akinsoya. we'll still be in touch with you from the studio here thank you